Respected audience, Assalamu alaikum. I am Professor Shamsud Jaman, Professor of Pathology. I welcome all in today's ninth lecture on hematology. Today, day four of leukemia. Previously, I have told you about the acute lymphoblastic leukemia and acute myeloblastic leukemia. Today, come to chronic myeloid leukemia. CML or it is also called chronic granulocytic leukemia CGL. If anybody suffers from chronic myeloid leukemia or chronic granulocytic leukemia, what may be the clinical presentations? Now come to clinical presentations of patients suffering from leukemia. Dear audience, you know acute leukemia usually occurs in childhood, but chronic myeloid leukemia usually occurs at middle age. usually middle age and there is anemia so symptoms of anemia symptoms of anemia like pallor fatigue effort intolerance palpitation. Briefly, these are the symptoms of anemia. Besides this, there is splenomegaly, splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, and this CML may be diagnosed or discovered accidentally on routine blood examination. Accidental diagnosis or accidental discovery on routine blood examination on routine blood examination. So, these are the clinical presentations of chronic myeloid leukemia. So, if anybody of middle age or elderly age with symptoms of anemia, splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, we may suspect it could be a case of, we suspect it could be a case of chronic myeloid leukemia. Besides this, the patient may suffer from frequent fever also, frequent fever also. So, how chronic myeloid leukemia or chronic dental leukemia is diagnosed in laboratory that is now come to laboratory diagnosis of CML. How to diagnose in laboratory? We have to do blood examination, blood examination, bone marrow examination. bone marrow examination, myeloperoxidase test, myeloperoxidase test, then chromosomal study, chromosomal study, then flow cytometry, cytochemistry. So, in laboratory, we can diagnose a case of CML by examining blood, bone marrow, myeloperoxidase test, 
chromosomal story or karyotyping, follow cytometry, cytochemistry. Now come to blood examination first. We have to do first hemoglobin. The percentage of hemoglobin reduced as it is a case of leukemia, patient suffers from anemia there, so hemoglobin reduced. Then ESR, it is elevated. We have to do TLC, total leukocyte count. You know, normal count is 4000 to 11000 per cubic millimeter blood. In case of leukemia, it is usually leukocytosis. So, we will get leukocytosis and the count is usually more than 1 lakh per cubic millimeter of blood, leukocytosis. And usually more than 1 lakh per cubic millimeter of blood. Then we have to do differential leukocyte count, DLC, differential leukocyte count. Here we will get most of the cells of WB series are myelocyte and metamyelocyte. Most of the cells, most of the cells are myelocyte and metamyelocyte. Metamyelocyte. Along with myelocyte and metamyelocyte, increased number increased number of basophil. Dear audience, you know basophil usually in our blood it is less than 1 percent, but if it is a case of CML, the percentage of basophil in CML is 2 to 10 percent or more than 10 percent. So, basophil in case of DLC, basophil is 2 to 10 percent or more. So, in DLC, we will get most of the cells are myelocyte and metamyelocyte. So, myelocyte like this, this is the nucleus and the cytoplasm contains granules. So, these are the myelocytes and this is, the myelo this is myelocyte and another cell will get metamyelocyte like this, this is the nucleus and these are the basophils. So, this is metamyelocyte and along with this increased number of myelocyte and metamyelocyte you will get basophil. You know if the, it is basophil, this is the nucleus like this and this is the basophils. So, this is the DLC now come to peripheral blood pain. Now come to peripheral blood pain. PVF. We have to first search for the RBC series. The cells show hypochromia. Cells of RBC series show hypochromia. Hypochromia with occasional with occasional nucleated red cell with occasional nucleated red cell. Dear audience, you know leukemia is the blood cancer of hemopoietic stem cell. So, if this is the medullary cavity and this is the bone and this medullary cavity contains bone marrow. If there is cancer of the hemopoietic stem cell with bone marrow, the leukemic cells come in the peripheral blood and along with this the patient suffers from anemia. As the patient suffers from anemia, there is stimulation of the bone marrow to produce RBC rapidly. Due to rapid production of RBC within the marrow in case of anemia in leukemia, there will be some production of nucleated cell that are produced in the bone marrow come along with the mesur RBC in the blood. So, there is a few number of nucleated cells in the peripheral blood. It is due to rapid production of RBC in marrow in case of leukemia.
Now come to WBC series in peripheral blood. WBC series cells show leukocytosis with most of the cells most of the cells are myelocyte myelocyte and metamyelocyte along with increased number of myelocyte and metamyelocyte there is increased number of basophils along with this increased number of basophils so this is the wb series of cml then platelet platelet sin adequate adequate in number so the peripheral blood film of cml rbc series show hypochromia with occasional nucleated cells w series cell show leukocytosis with most of the cells are myelocytes and metamyelocytes and increased number of basophils platelets in adequate in number then we have to do reticulocyte count dear audience you know normal reticulocyte count is 0 to 2 percent you know reticulocyte is the stage of maturation of rbc before it the just a bit ahead the mesure rbc the normal count is 0 to 2 percent it will be increased it will be increased why increased as there is a rapid production due to anemia due to rapid production so there is immature rbc like nucleated cell and like reticulocyte come peripheral blood now come to bone marrow examination now come to bone marrow now come to bone marrow examination for diagnosis of chronic myeloid leukemia dear audience you know leukemia is a blood cancer and it is the cancer of hemorrhagic stem cell so marrow will be hypercellular so marrow is hypercellular with increased myeloid erythroid ratio that audience as it is a cancer of myeloid series cancer of myeloid series so myeloidosis myeloid series cells in increased so there is increased myeloid erythroid ratio then erythropoiesis erythropoiesis is depressed but normoblastic but normoblastic dear audience you know if it is bone and this is medullary cavity containing bone marrow as it is a leukemia of myeloid series so rbc series or erythropoiesis is depressed so erythropoiesis is depressed but it is normoblastic then granulopoiesis granulopoiesis is hyperactive as it is it is chronic granulocytic leukemia so granulopoiesis is hyperactive with most of the cells with most of the cells are myelocyte myelocyte and metamyelocyte and metamyelocyte their audience you know in normal bone marrow granulopoiesis is active and with all stages of maturation with all stages of maturation there is a myeloblast proportionately proportionately promyelocyte proportionately metamyelocyte myelocyte etc etc but as it is a blood cancer it is a cancer it is chronic granulocytic leukemia so granulopoiesis is hyperactive 
and there is no all stages of menstruation proportionately, but most of the cells are myelocytic and metamyelocyte. Then megakaryocyte, megakaryocyte, seen adequate in number, adequate in number, and megakaryocyte is adequate in number, no parasite found, no parasite, no parasite found in the marrow examined. So marrow is hypercellular as it is blood cancer as it is cancer of hemopoietic stem cell, so hypercellular mellow. As it is chronic glandular leukemia, myeloid series cancer, so increased myeloid erythro ratio. Erythropoiesis is depressed but normoblastic erythropoiesis. Granulopoiesis is hyperactive with most of the cells are myelocyte and metamyelocyte. Megagodocyte seen adequate, no parasite found in the marrow examined. Now come to myeloparoxidase test. Dear audience, as it is a case of chronic myeloid leukemia, we will get most of the cells are myelocyte and metamyelocyte. Along with, we can get a few number of myeloblasts also. So if we do myeloparoxidase test for chronic myeloid leukemia, the myeloblast that are found along with the most of the number of myelocyte and myeloblasts will be paroxidase positive. So in case of CML, the myeloblasts, the myeloblast found a few number is paroxidase positive, paroxidase positive. Then we have to do cytochemistry. Cytochemistry, we do cytochemistry to differentiate the cells. We do it to differentiate, to differentiate cells of myeloid series. Myeloid series, monocyte series, and lymphoid series. Then we have to do chromosomal study. Chromosomal study. That audience in karyotyping or in chromosomal study, we search for the Philadelphia chromosome. We search for the Philadelphia chromosome. In most of the cases of CML, we can get Philadelphia chromosome. So, in most of the cases of CML, we get Philadelphia chromosome. Philadelphia chromosome. Dear audience, I have told you what is Philadelphia chromosome. If this is ninth chromosome and this is short arm and if this is 22nd chromosome centromere and this is short arm, this is 22nd chromosome. If translocation occurs between these two, after translocation, what will get is some portion of this and some portion of this short arm is exchanged, is exchanged, is exchanged, and this is called translocation. After translocation between the ninth and twenty second chromosome, after translocation, this twenty second chromosome is called Philadelphia chromosome. So after translocation between 9th and 22nd chromosome, the 22nd is called Philadelphia chromosome. 
it is called Philadelphia chromosome. Why it is called Philadelphia? It is termed according to the name of city Philadelphia. Now come to flow cytometry. Dear audience, we do flow cytometry to diagnose leukemia. It is a laboratory method. This method is used. It is used, used number one to detect a specific cell. It is used to detect a specific cell. It is used to identify a specific cell. It is used to count a specific cell. It is used to obtain to obtain to obtain a special component it is used to obtain a special component of cell so this is the purposes of use of flow cytometry all these informations regarding cell is based on so all above informations informations regarding informations regarding the cell is based on so all the informations regarding the cell is based on two things based on two things based on two things one is physical physical characteristics physical characteristics of cell so this information is based on physical characteristics of cell and it also it is also based on presence of antigen on cell membrane presence of antigen on cell membrane or within the cell or within the cell. So, the information that you get by using flow cytometry is based on the physical characteristics of cell and it also based on presence of antigen on cell membrane or within the cell. What is done in flow cytometry? Cells are stained. First, the cells are stained. After staining, cells are allowed cells are allowed to pass as a lamellar so after staining the cells are first or allowed to pass as a lamellar flow as a lamellar flow through a laser beam through a laser beam. So, after staining the cells are allowed to pass as a lamellar flow through a laser beam. Then the light scatter, then light scatter is measured, is it measured with fluorescence with pollution impedance. What is done? For the cells are stained, then cells are allowed to pass as a lamellar flow through a laser beam and the light scatter is measured with fluorescent impedance. This is the flow cytometry and this is all about the laboratory diagnosis of chronic myeloid leukemia that is chronic granulocytic leukemia. Now come to if anybody suffers from 
chronic myeloid leukemia for long time. For many years, a person is suffering from chronic myeloid leukemia for many years. Patient may suffer from a crisis that is called blast crisis or blastic transformation. Now come to blast crisis or blastic transformation. Blastic transformation. So anybody suffering from chronic myeloid leukemia for a long time, he or she may suffer from blast crisis or blastic transformation. Now come to what is blastic transformation? What is blastic transformation or blast crisis? Patient with chronic myeloid leukemia patient with chronic myeloid leukemia may suffer may suffer from progressively progressively increasing progressively increasing splenomegaly splenomegaly with with increased myeloblast and thrombocytopenia thrombocytopenia is called blast crisis or blastic transformation respected audience you know patient with cml may come to you with splenomegaly you know hepatomegaly so anybody suffering from chronic myeloid leukemia for a long time he or she may develop blast crisis or blastic transformation what is this patient with chronic myeloid leukemia suffer from progressively increasing splenomegaly Number one, with increased myeloblast and thrombocytopenia. You know, in CML, in chronic myeloid leukemia, there is a few number of myeloblast, but most of the cells are myeloid and metamyeloid. If there is blast crisis, myeloid number is decreased, but myeloblast is increased, and there is thrombocytopenia. And this increased myeloblast and thrombocytopenia, patient may be have patient may behave like acute leukemia. So you know in chronic myeloid leukemia there is no increased number of myeloblast but there is the most of the cells are myeloid and metamyeloid and there is no thrombocytopenia. If the patient suffering from CML develops increased myeloblast and thrombocytopenia it looks like acute leukemia. Then it looks like acute leukemia because in acute Myeloblast leukemia, most of the cells are myeloblast and there is thrombocytopenia. So, patients suffering from blast crisis behave like the acute myeloblastic leukemia. So, if anybody suffers from blast crisis or blastic transformation in CML, what may be the presentations? So, presentations or patients with Blastic transformation may come to you. Presentation of blast crisis. So, if anybody suffers from blast crisis, what will be the presentations? The presentation presentations like infection as most of the cells are myeloblast there is more chance of infection so due to infection patient may come to you with frequent fever then hemorrhage hemorrhage like nasal bleeding like gum bleeding like parietal bleeding etc and internal hemorrhage also this hemorrhagic disorder in blast crisis is due to is due to thrombocytopenia. 
due to thrombocytopenia there is bleeding manifestations and patient may develop limb adenopathy limb adenopathy so these are the presentations common presentations of patient with chronic myeloid leuke leukemia suffering from blush crisis and patient may come to you with besides infection hemorrhage and limb adenopathy patient may come to you with chloroma so presentation is infection frequent fever hemorrhage limb adenopathy and chloroma now come to chloroma now come to what is chloroma dear audience chloroma is a tumor like mass due to subperistial deposition of leukemic cell so what is this a tumor like mass a tumor like mass due to subperistial due to subperistial due to subperistial deposition deposition of leukemic cells leukemic cells is called chloroma so chloroma is a tumor like mass due to subperistial deposition of leukemic cells now come to common sites of chloroma common sites of chloroma common sites of chloroma it may found in skull bones usually skull bones usually besides this you can get in sternum and you can also get in ribs so whatever may be the site of chloroma it is nothing but tumor like mass due to subperistial deposition of leukemic cells so if you suppose this is a rib if this is a rib like this and this is the periosteum if this is the periosteum so there will be subperistial collections of leukemic cells giving rise to a mass and this mass is known as chloroma this is chloroma so where chloroma is found what are the conditions or what are the situations we can get chloroma so chloroma is found in number 1 acute myeloid leukemia it is found in blush crisis blush crisis of cml so if there is blush crisis of cml or anybody suffers from acute myeloblastic leukemia we can get chloroma so this is all about the chloroma and this is all about the chronic granulocyte leukemia there is chronic myeloid leukemia and blush transformation or blastic transformation and blush crisis of chronic myeloid leukemia to dr this thanks all